Today's lecture will highlight the historical background of the optimal controls theory and present the course objectives and prominent topics that will be covered. I'll also be going on the brief applications of autonomous driving and very simple example to present before you what to expect from the class. Optimal control theory has a rich history and is an outgrowth of the classical calculus of variations with a history of stretching back over 360 years. The story begins with Galileo in 1638 when he posed two shape problem. The shape of a heavy chain suspended between two points, the catenary, and the shape of a wire such that a bead sliding along it. The bead under gravity traverses the distance between its endpoints in minimum time. This problem is called the Brachistrone problem. It is a very interesting problem and we will be discussing it in further lectures in this course. Galileo's conjectures on the solutions of his two problems were incorrect and Newton in 1685 was the first to solve a shape problem, although he did not publish it until 1694. In 1696, Johann Bernoulli challenged his contemporaries to solve the Brachistrone problem. Five mathematicians responded to the challenge and all the solutions were published in 1697. This competition aroused interest in this type of problem was followed by a period of activity by several mathematicians. In 1744, Euler formulated the problem in general terms as of one finding the curve x of t over a time interval with given boundary conditions which minimize a cost j in integral form. He also gave a first order necessary condition of optimality. Up to this point, the solution techniques had been essentially geometric until in 1755 when Lagrange described an analytical approach based on the perturbations of variations of the optimal curve using his undetermined multipliers, which led directly to Euler's necessary condition known as Euler-Lagrange equation. Thus, calculus of variation was born. Some important contributors, as I've already highlighted, are John Bernoulli, Isaac Newton, Leonard Euler, Lagrange, Legendre, Jacobi, Hamilton, Wistress, and Mayer and Bolza. Some other important milestones in the development of optimal control include formulation of dynamic programming by Richard Bellman in 1950s, development of the minimum principle by Liv Pontryagin, also in the 50s, and formulation of the linear quadratic regulator and the common filter by Rudolf Kalman in 1960s. Applications of the optimal control are found in many different fields, including aerospace, autonomous driving, process control, robotics, bioengineering, economics, finance, and management science. It continues to be an active area of research within the controls theory. This course will be entirely focused on the applications in autonomous driving. Optimal control, by definition, is the process of determining decision vector, a control that minimizes some cost. And the format or the notation that we use is minimization of this function c, which is a function of x, the state vector, and the u, the controls. And this is minimized over the control vector. However, the states are by definition completely determined by the controls and cannot be varied independently of the controls. Thus, we can also say that C is just a function of U and we are minimizing it over control constraints. For example, consider system differential equations, X dot equals FXU. This is a very generic notation that is used to define differential equations. If the initial states and controls are known, then all the future states can be determined by direct integration of the differential equations. Further, for optimal control problems, there may also be constraints imposed on the system. For example, fixed final state, final states where the final states have been specified, specified functions of the final states, that is the surface constraint, bounded or limited controls, time constraints, and inequality constraints. Note that in the previous slide, C and J, I'll just jump to the previous slides. I, I, I must mention C and J are scalar functions. So they give a scalar value, and that is what we are minimizing, that scalar value. And the distinction between the states and the control is made at the start of the problem itself. It is very important that the relationship between the states and control is described and developed from physical laws. Moving forward, we can thus say an optimal control problem can be formulated as find the control U that maximizes or minimizes the performance index J and satisfies the system differential equations x dot fx u without violating any of the system constraints. In a gist, to formulate an optimal controls problem following a required mathematical model of the system 
to be controlled, performance index, boundary conditions on states and constraints to be satisfied by states and controls, and a statement of what variables are free. The best thing about controls, optimal controls problem is that everything is well defined and once you have defined it very well, you can structure the solution accordingly. And that is what will be the approach of ours in this course. We will be defining each of these elements of the problem while identifying the what kind of problems are there. There are different types of linear, non-linear problems uh, based on the constraint, the type of constraint it is. And then once we have defined the problem very well, then the solution becomes very easy. And that is what will be our approach for this course. Solution to an optimal controls problem thus involves following main steps. Derive a set of necessary conditions for an extremum using ordinary calculus for static systems or the calculus of variations for dynamic systems. Determine optimal control u star from the necessary conditions. All possible optimal controls will satisfy the necessary conditions. I hope this introduction helped you formulate a picture of what an optimal controls problem look like, what are the important elements of this problem, what does the corresponding solution looks like. And that was the objective of these charts. Moving forward, I will now define course objective and topics covered. The purpose of this course is to develop theoretical and applied skills in optimal control and its application in autonomous driving. Some of the prominent topics covered in this course will include calculus of variation and dynamic programming, optimal controls for static and dynamic systems. So these are now different types of systems, right? And that is what will be our objective. We will first identify the type of system it is, and then we will define each element of the problem, and then corresponding solution will just come out from the structure of the problem. The third topic will be optimal control with state and control constraints and time optimal problems. The problems like fixed time, free time, where there's no limitation on time or there are constraints on time. And then there are sometimes path constraints, which we'll be talking about in the last topic, non-holonomic system optimal control. So they, these are different types of problem. Uh, and if you can categorize the problem very well, then the solution becomes very easy, or at least the approach to the solution becomes very easy. We'll also talk about Pontryagin's minimum principle, Hamiltonian Jacobi th theory, Hamiltonian Jacobi Bellman equation, LQG problems, and common filter and duality. Now remember, these are the topics that we'll be covering in this course, but the, the application of these topics, especially something like LQG and common filter, was far beyond optimal control. It falls through over in estimation theory as well. It is used very much in estimation theory. So this course will not only provide you with skills or knowledge on how to solve optimal controls problem, it will also prepare you for solving some of the estimation problems. Okay, this chart goes over the architecture of autonomous vehicle. It is a very brief introduction to autonomous, how the autonomous vehicles work. And especially we are concerned about the control component of these vehicles. The two main parts of the control component is the ECU, which implements the control algorithm and the uh, communication function between ECU and mechanical parts. So something like actuator. Uh, the actuators are mechanical parts, but the communication bus communicates the control parameter to the mechanical part. And the, in the diagram, you can already see that we have these various parameters which affect the control algorithm. These provide the algorithm with this knowledge about its surroundings, about the environment it is working in, and also about uh, what the vehicle is doing. And then based on that knowledge and based on the objectives that are there for the vehicle, say it has to reach a certain destination and it has to follow a certain path, then the direction, the speed, these are the parameters which can be controlled. And that is what the control algorithm will be doing. Thus prominent optimal control problems in ADAS system include the goal of steering a vehicle to a desired path over fixed time while minimizing the error between the path taken by the vehicle and the desired path. I'm, I'm here on this chart, I'm highlighting all the different types of optimal control problems that can be, that you can, uh, that we may need to solve when formulating a, an architecture for ADAS systems. And one of the first 
problem that I talk about here is the goal of steering a vehicle to a desired path. And we can clearly see that the objective, the cost function here will be the time and the cost function will be the error between the, the path that is being taken by the vehicle and the desired path. So the, you will minimize the cost, the error over the fixed time constraint. You have to reach a certain error within the given time. So if you are steering, then you have to minimize the error within a fixed time interval such that you stay on the desired path while the error stays within the limits. The next problem is the goal of adhering to speed limits. Here the cost will be to minimize the error between the actual speed and the desired speed while satisfying time constraints again. I hope you can see the structure of uh, these problems are very similar and that is what we will be exploiting. When we work on optimal controls problem, as I said, we depend on categorizing them better, recognizing the elements better, and then formulating the problem such that we can solve them easily. The third problem will be the goal of lane keeping and path following while maintaining vehicle stability. The goal of obstacle avoidance and object tracking. Again, this is another uh, important problem when talking about autonomous vehicles because you have to recognize the objects that are in your path, uh, say pedestrian, other non-physical objects, and you have to track their movement. In fact, one of the important part of le uh, reaching level five autonomy, there are different levels of autonomy. And currently level three is what is being supposed to be available in the market of what we are, we are reaching to. But the goal of all the companies like uh, Google's Waymo, uh, Tesla, and other companies working in this field is to reach level five autonomy. And level five autonomy is the passenger and the driver will not have to supervise or uh, be checking the, what the vehicle is doing. They can even sleep. Uh, while the vehicle is driving itself. And that is the level five of autonomy. And to reach that level of autonomy, it is very important if you can predict, if you can not only track the obstacles or the objects, you also want to predict what their motion will be in the future. For example, pedestrian motion is uh, relatively difficult because there are a lot of degrees of freedom involved in it. Pedestrian can go in any direction and hence it is a difficult problem. While to predict a motion for a bicycle is relatively easy because the degree of freedoms are not as many. It will go in the direction it is facing the, or the cyclist is pedaling. So, so these are some of the problems that are encountered consistently in this uh, field. Uh, we will not be going into prediction and estimation that is more into the estimation theory, but I'm uh, talking to you about this because it is all related and uh, once you can estimate it then you will need that estimation knowledge to control your vehicle so estimation and control are both related and for this course we will be focused on uh, working controls part of the problem the last problem that i highlight here is the goal of effective parallel parking with minimum distance to obstacles I also present an architecture, a diagram of the architecture, controls architecture, a very generic controls architecture for an automated driving problem or, or system. The basic objective of control system design is to choose a set of control inputs like brake, throttle, steering, and gear position for a car that will achieve the desired goals. The resulting control laws in, the, in general consist of a priori knowledge of the goals and a model of the vehicle. When I say a priori knowledge, that is what is your desired goals? What is your desired path? That is the a priori knowledge. And another part of a priori knowledge will be coming from the estimation component of the vehicle that I was talking about. So that goal and uh, that knowledge is fed into the system as a feed forward control. And Together, this means that we can correct the error by comparing measurements of the environment and the actual vehicle motion, thus the feedback control. So what we are doing here is we are using our knowledge about the environment, about the actual motion of the, the vehicle. And at the same time, we are feeding part of that knowledge as a feed forward control into the controller and then 
using how the vehicle is performing and feeding that part of the error from the output into the controller again. So there are these two things that are being fed into the controller feed forward and feed back. Feed forward is the knowledge that is coming from estimation theory and the desired targets and feedback is the performance of the vehicle. And thus that, that completes the control architecture that helps us control all these different parameters and give a good performance for, for the, the entire parameters that we are trying to control. And again, this is a very generic architecture that I've shown, but uh, I hope that presents some picture to you what, how the controls work. And when we will be solving optimal controls problem, that will be entirely based on getting that control input. We will be focused on that control input, how to get the control input. We, while, when we already have the knowledge about feed forward, error and feedback. So we will be only focused on that small part of this diagram. We will not be focused on how the feed forward is being calculated, how the feedback is uh, being calculated, or what, what is the environment look like? No, we will be only focused on these, uh, how to con get the control input, how to get the minimized value or the maximized value, whichever is the target. We will only be focused on the cost function. And uh, preferably we, we like to go for a global solution instead of local solution. So that is another thing that we will be talking about later in the course. But overall, this is the, the brief about um, controls problem, uh, specifically uh, in relation to autonomous driving applications. I'll move on to a very simple example, which I'll be presenting today. And I hope that gives uh, a sense into what kind of problems we will be encountering. And this is like one of the simplest problem but also at the same time, a very generic problem. May not need to know all the components of the solution. You may not recognize or be able to dissect through the solution entirely when I will be, we will be solving it together today. But the objective of solving this example is to present to you that once you have recognized different elements of the problem, uh, the solution is very straightforward. It kind of comes through the equation itself. So the problem here is to find that point nearest to the origin on the line. And we have two linear constraints, these two equations of lines, where x, y, z are rectangular coordinates. And what we are minimizing is this uh, cost function L, which is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. The solution will be that we first recognize the cost function, which is L and it is a function of the states uh, or, or the rectangular coordinates x, y, z. Uh, but as you can see, the states are also the controls here. So there is not much of a difference there. And L is being minimized to two linear constraints, which are equation two and three. We now define Hamiltonian by equation four. And I may not be familiar with Hamiltonian, which is fine right now. We, what we, uh, the way we define Hamiltonian is equal to the cost function plus these lambdas, which are the co-state constraints. Here the, uh, the constraints are linear, so it is very straightforward that H equals L plus lambda one F1 plus lambda two F2. Uh, using this we, uh, equation four, we can derive the necessary conditions for stationary value. And again, you don't need to know all the elements right now. You may not know all the elements but we will be discussing about all these uh, later into the course. Entire objective here is to see that once we have recognized the cost function, the constraints, then we can define the, the Hamiltonian and based on this equation of the Hamiltonian, we can get the partial of the Hamiltonian with respect to the state and the co-state to get all the necessary conditions from five, six, seven, two, and three, all these equations. And once we have these necessary conditions, then, we can get the value of the state uh, and the co-state solve for the, the rectangular coordinates that we are, the minimized value. And that is the entire objective. So uh, from equation five, six, and seven, we get um, the states as a function of co-state. 
from uh, these 8, 9, 10, these equations, putting them in the necessary conditions for the post state, we get the value for the post state. And uh, using that value, we get the rectangular coordinates. Thus, from the necessary conditions, we get the above values for rectangular coordinates that define the point nearest to the origin and satisfies the two linear constraints.